The nuclear shift in the uranium narrative. Airpocalypse. It's morbid to think about. But one of the leading causes of death is air pollution. According to the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, an estimated 7 million people die every year from air pollution-related issues. Air pollution is caused by solid and liquid particles along with gases suspended in the air. By far, the largest contributor to air pollution comes from the world's electricity generation, namely burning fossil fuels. As the world becomes more focused on reducing its greenhouse gas emissions and heading to a net zero, change must start with the electricity sector. By the way, be sure to remember the catchphrase net zero. You're going to hear a lot about it in 2021. Did you know that coal-fired power plants still make up over 30% of the global power generation? The chart you're looking at right now is the global power generation for electricity. Coal is still the go-to source for baseload power. Natural gas is still very high also. Coal is by far the dirtiest fuel to burn. It makes all the sense in the world that one of the first thing governments in the world are going to do is say, no more coal. I expect governments to force mass closures of coal-fired power plants over the coming decades. However, while that sounds good on paper, how does one substitute new power generation for coal? After all, replacing 30% of the global baseload power production is not something that can happen overnight. Not to mention telling citizens to reduce power consumption by 30% is out of the question. Is nuclear power the baseload solution to save the world? What makes it especially difficult is that coal is baseload power. This means that plants run continuously, 24-7, with minimal shutdowns. While solar and wind power provide electricity, it is intermittent. Power is only generated when the sun shines and the wind blows. Yes, we can store it in large batteries. But we are nowhere near global adoption at utility-scale batteries that are cost-efficient. That day will come, but it isn't right now, nor within this decade. If nations want clean baseload power, the answer lies in nuclear power. Nuclear power is powered by uranium. Nuclear power produces enormous amounts of clean energy. In fact, there are zero emissions. Climate crusaders will love that, no doubt. The chart you're looking at right now shows the carbon dioxide emitted per baseload power source. You can see nuclear in the far left at zero, natural gas, petroleum, and coal. Yes, petroleum is still used in certain parts of the world to produce electricity, as crazy as that sounds. I have been actively involved in the uranium sector for 20 years. I'm also the largest independent financier in uranium globally. I have been to the uranium mines that matter in the world. I don't know of anyone else in the industry that can claim that. The short report on uranium that made my subscribers a small fortune. Two years ago, I wrote a short report. In fact, the CFO of one of the world's largest uranium producers was even upset at me and shared his comments with me. I had many self-acclaimed gurus and internet trolls attack my report. They all missed the whole point of the report. The report was about creating the worst possible scenario for uranium. And if my recommendations could do well in that framework, then I knew I had a winning portfolio of uranium stocks. So how did Katusa Research do? Frankly, awesome. Here's the factual evidence. Here are the uranium-focused peers, which include Cameco, Denison, Fission, NextGen, URC, EFR, and UR Energy, which, by the way, I've been to all those assets. So the red line are the top of the uranium sector companies. The green line is the first KRO, which is the Katusa Resource Opportunity Stock. It beat the peers by just under 300%. The second KRO, the Katusa Research Recommended Stock Opportunity, is the blue line. It also just beat the index by just under 300%. The yellow line was the third time, and that was just under 350% gains. All three of the investment opportunities by Katusa Research have significantly outperformed the peers. Most importantly, though, Katusa Research had zero losers in uranium. 
Remember what Warren Buffett said about there being two rules in investing. Don't lose money. And the second rule is don't forget rule number one. We didn't just beat the peers by a small margin. We're talking about multi-baggers better. So I invested millions of dollars into these companies alongside my subscribers at the same time and the same price. As I mentioned, the first recommendation is up over 301% and the stock trades heavy volume. And it's not some dinky exchange that trades by appointment. Liquidity matters, remember that. Are these results typical for every investment, speculation or trade? Of course not, but we did kick ass in uranium. But we've asked some of our most successful subscribers for feedback and here's what they responded with. Greg H wrote, he's up 19 grand in profit and said, I know I have benefited not only financially, but education as a smaller investor being given the opportunity. Other than that, thank you for everything. Another subscriber, Paul E told us he turned 13 grand into just under 27 grand, doubling his money in a short period of time. I have been very impressed with everything. I have learned a lot. The analysis on the different markets and companies is light years from what I was seeing and doing. I would love to have a way my kids could learn this too. You are making me a better investor. Allowing stocks to gain weight. And we've seen incredible gains we've captured over the last 12 months. At the same time, uranium equities were as hated as they came. And patient investors are now being rewarded for buying what no one else was looking at. So what's next for uranium? Today, the outlook for uranium is better than any time in the past decade. The reason? Wall Street and Capitol Hill is understanding that nuclear power can be the source of zero carbon emission baseload power. Recently, rumors are circulating that the EU, the European Union, will be announcing that nuclear qualifies as a green investment. This paves the way for enormous funding opportunities to build smaller, modular nuclear reactors with shorter construction and permitting times. It's a thesis that I've suggested for years and wrote about in my New York Times bestseller book in 2014. More recently, Bill Gates has also gotten on board with saying nuclear power will absolutely be politically acceptable gain. It's safer than oil, coal, and natural gas. The reality is the nuclear narrative is changing. If nuclear qualifies as a green investment in Europe, it's only a matter of time before other regions take notice. In the United States alone, there's over 200 gigawatts of coal-fired electricity generation in operation today. Coal-fired electricity powers over 25 million homes in America. This represents 23.4% of U.S. power electricity generation. And the U.S. have improved significantly, as it was just a short while ago that 50% of America's electricity generation came from coal. So for all those American haters, the U.S. has made more improvements than any other first or second world nation. Part of all this could be easily substituted with clean baseload power from nuclear power plants. According to the EIA, which is the International Energy Agency, and Carbon Brief, all coal-fired plants need to be closed by 2040, globally, if we want to hit our emission reduction goal targets. This means closing 100 gigawatts of coal-fired power generation capacity every year for 20 years. That's going to be a serious shift if governments elect to go nuclear, it will require enormous amounts of uranium. To put it in perspective, according to both the World Nuclear Association and the IAE, there are 440 operable reactors in 50 different countries across the world. This requires 178 million pounds of uranium every year. This would mean that every four years, the global demand for uranium would double. Being the first is fun. Whether you like my style or not is irrelevant. The facts are what you need to listen to. I was asked to give the keynote presentation at the World Nuclear Fuel Summit for a reason. My research and my conclusions are ahead of the curve. In the next 60 days, I'm going to publish a never before seen opportunity that I believe will exceed those that I have done in the uranium space. KRO subscribers will be the first to read about this opportunity. It's probably the single most exciting company and trend I've come across in many, many years. Sounds like an exaggeration, I know. But when you see exactly what I'm talking about and look at the data and the facts and the numbers, you will likely come to the exact same conclusion. So if you're not doing your due diligence on things the crowd is neglecting, then you could very well miss out on the next sectors returning triple digit gains down the road. Stay safe.